Welcome to our devos. This week we have covered the woes. Not the woes, like I got a case of the woes, but the time that Jesus said woe so many times when he was speaking strongly against the religious leaders at the time and just the way that they were treating people and how repugnant he found it. We're going to bring to the final close one of the things that Jesus condemns, and that is what was going on in their hearts. We talked about this a little bit yesterday about cleaning the inside of your heart before you worry about what the outside looks like. He condemns murderous hearts, murderous hearts. Now, at the time, the Pharisees and the scribes and the Sadducees, they had such a high amount of respect for the prophets that wrote the Old Testament scriptures. I mean, they really, really put stock in believing that these were the best of the best. But if you remember, if you read through the prophets, if you read through what happened to some of the Old Testament leaders, you're going to find that they were terribly mistreated in a lot of cases. Some of them even abused, died in unjust hands. Well, Jesus doesn't let the attitude of the murderous heart get away, despite the fact that the people that he was speaking to didn't commit the murders. He says that the murderous heart is still here. Look what he says in Matthew chapter 29, verse 31. He says, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You build the tombs of the prophets and decorate the monuments of the righteous saying, if we had lived in the days of our fathers, we would not have taken part with them in shedding the blood of the prophets. Thus you witness against yourselves that you are sons of those who murdered the prophets. He groups them together. And when we look at this idea, keep in mind, he's speaking to people and this will show you just how strong he is and how unbelievably cunning he is in the way he's speaking. He's speaking to people that are plotting to crucify him. They are literally going to crucify the son of God, not an Old Testament prophet, not just a person that was devoted in the Old Testament, which a lot of those folks died too at the unjust hands. But he's saying, you are just like your fathers. You are just like your fathers because they are going to murder him. Now, What do we practically do with this? Because you're like, I haven't planned on murdering anybody this week. I hope you don't. But one thing I want you to be aware of that you might be forgetting. Any human heart, if left unguarded from the intervention of God, is capable of atrocious things. Any one of us, myself included. I was just dealing with a situation not too long ago. Something happened to somebody that I, I care about. And when I heard this thing happen, it did something to me in my heart, and I felt this thing, this uncomfortable thing of rage. And I'm like, ooh, that's not the Lord. That's not the Lord. This is something in me. This is something not good. You might say it might be murderous, but regardless, it's possible that it could happen to you. God doesn't want us to have hearts that look like the wicked ones that crucified the Savior. He wants us to have hearts that are so sensitive to His Spirit, to His calling, to His leading, that we become childlike in our faith. He wants our hearts to be made not out of stone, but out of flesh. He wants us to be people not out of vengeance, not of vengeance, but of mercy and of love and of grace. So because of that, God says, whoa. I want to be a person whose heart is like Jesus. I want to have his strength, his mercy, his love. But it starts with the heart. It starts with me making sure that my heart is fixed and centered on him. And that's what we ought to do every day.